Hi, I'm Brian Watchers of VMware Education. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the most important concepts that you need to grasp in order to be an orchestrator developer, and that's a concept known as variable binding. This video is one in a series of videos in which we're discussing orchestrator. In the preceding video, we discussed how to supply input parameters to a workflow. Now with input parameters and other variable types, it's important to set up that variable binding. So let's study how we do so. In Orchestrator, there are different types of variables. Variables are used to store information such as the names of items, such as clusters and data stores. Variables can also be used to store things such as objects for virtual machines, hosts, data stores, and networks. But ultimately in Orchestrator, there are four different types of variables. You can see three of them listed here. Input parameters, output parameters, attributes, and the fourth type of variable is one that we discuss in class. Variable binding is a process by which we're able to take input parameters, output parameters, and or attributes and make those variables visible to schema elements within our workflow. So as you can see illustrated here in this particular slide, we have a very simple workflow that has three simple schema elements. The first two schema elements are scriptable tasks. The third one is a user interaction. We'll talk about what that is in a few moments. But as we said in the preceding video, input parameters allow us to take information from a user. So when the user runs the workflow, he's able to supply information. That information is passed through input parameters. Output parameters, on the other hand, are used to pass information from the workflow out of the workflow and back to the user or whoever's calling the workflow. So whereas input parameters and output parameters allow us to pass information into and out of a workflow, the third type of variable, attributes, aren't used for passing in or passing out information. Rather, attributes are variables that exist within the workflow itself. We'll talk about attributes in a few short moments, but let's start with input parameters. As we saw in the preceding video, it's not enough to simply create an input parameter. In order for those schema elements to see an input parameter, we have to set up variable binding. So in this slide here, we're illustrating that in red, that there's a variable, specifically an input parameter, that the user is using to pass in information. But to make the value of that input parameter visible to the user, we have to set up the variable binding of the input parameter, which we're illustrating with the green arrow. Now, if we continue onwards here, you'll notice that a single schema element, such as task one, can be supplied multiple input parameters by simply setting up the variable binding for each input parameter. It's totally normal and totally expected for a schema element to have multiple variable bindings. Similarly, it's possible for a input parameters, such as the second one in our display here, to be bound to multiple schema elements. In order for values to be exported out of the workflow, we need to set up not just an output parameter, but we need to set up variable binding from a schema element to that output parameter. Now we're going to see how to set up this variable binding, but right now we're just focusing on the concepts. And the key concept to grasp here is that there's a difference between creating a parameter versus binding to the parameter. Now the third type of variable that we introduced a few moments ago are called attributes. Now, Unlike input parameters and output parameters, which are used to pass information in and out of a workflow, attributes exist solely within the workflow itself. Attributes are used to pass information between different schema elements in a workflow. So as you can see here, we've set up a right or an outward bound variable binding from task number one to our attribute. And then so that the next schema element, task two, can see that variable, we've set up an inward binding, a, a read binding from that same attribute. So we're going to learn as we go through the following demo that when we set up attributes, you can set them up to be an inward binding or an outward binding or both inward and outward. In this particular illustration, we're showing you that a schema element such as task two can 
have both an inward binding and an outward binding to the same attribute. Again, that's totally normal, totally expected. When we set up variable binding in the demonstration coming up, we'll take a look at how you would do so. Now, the last part of this uh, slide that we're illustrating here involves something called a user interaction. When workflows run, we can ask the user to supply certain information via input parameters. But at times, there's information that the user can't possibly supply because he can't know the information until the workflow actually starts running. For instance, we might be running a workflow that asks the user to supply the name of a virtual machine that he wants created. We can ask the user other information via input parameters such as what size do you want that virtual machine to be? How many virtual CPUs? How much virtual memory? Th those are questions that the user can answer. But once the workflow starts running, we might want to build in some business logic that says things such as, if a user requests more virtual CPUs than one virtual CPU, then we need to behave differently. Now, we could just hard code into the workflow that if a user says, I want more than one virtual CPU, we, we simply tell them, you, you can't have it. But we want our workflows to be more flexible than that. What we can do in situations such as this is to have the workflow pause. When the workflow sees that the user is asking for more than one virtual CPU, we can send a message. There are multiple ways of doing this. One way is to send an email. We can send a message to a group of approvers, which we're illustrating with the little uh, orange people on the lower left-hand corner of this slide. We can send a user interaction message to a group of approvers asking them whether or not to approve this request. The user wants a virtual machine that has more than one virtual CPU. Do we want to allow this or not? And again, through that user interaction process, our approvers can specify whether or not they want that particular VM created or not. Again, we couldn't know when we ran the workflow whether or not we were going to allow the user to have his virtual machine created, but rather we purposely set up a user interaction so that the decision, yes or no, should we create a virtual machine, is given to others, approvers, to make that decision. When setting up variable binding, you first have to create the variable, which we've illustrated how to do in the previous video. In the previous video, we specifically showed you going into the Inputs tab to create an input parameter. If you want to create an output parameter, you would go to the Outputs tab. And attributes are created on the, by going to the General tab. But in the case of all three of those types of variables, you create them with the General, Inputs, and Outputs tab. But as I said in the previous video, simply creating the variable is not enough. In order for the variables to be visible to schema elements in your workflow, you have to set up variable binding. And the way you set up variable binding is you select the schema element that you want to bind the variable to, click on its pencil icon, and then in the schema element editor, you go to the in tab or the out tab, or perhaps both, to set up an inward binding, an outward binding, or both. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check out the other videos in the series to learn more about vCenter Orchestrator. For in-depth, hands-on orchestrator training, enroll in the VMware vCenter Orchestrator Develop Workflows class and connect with other orchestrator developers online at communities.vmware.com. Thank you.